just have to play the game! That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone. Warning. What you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? Alright. That's... Sounds good to me. Uh, I had a fun full day of streaming yesterday. Okay, like lots of, lots of fun. And I'm done streaming for the day. <clears throat> and I get a notice from PayPal. That I got a ridiculous amount of chargebacks again. <laughs> this time around for tips from like four plus months ago. Ridiculous. Yeah, these tips came in like in May. And I'm getting chargebacks from multiple tips from fucking May. I'm like, what is this? Now I haven't even had a chance to, you know, they came, these came late last night. <clears throat> so I haven't even had a chance to, to look, uh, look them up or dispute them yet. I get the feeling it's more tips from that same guy who tipped me a bunch over a course of like eight months. He had tipped me like some crazy amount of money. And then all of a sudden, a few months ago, he charged me back a ton of them. And I disputed them all. And if I remember correctly, I think I ended up, it took like three months, like two to three months or something crazy like that. <clears throat> but I'm almost positive that I won the majority of them. I think there may have been like one or two that, that for some odd reason I lost. And this again, I talk about it every once in a while. This is the fucked up and weird thing about PayPal. There doesn't seem to be a consistent system that PayPal uses to determine who wins a chargeback. Oh, I gotta take a sip. Like literally, no exaggeration, about half of what I made yesterday is now suspended, you know? About half of what I made on the streams got suspended because of these chargebacks, and now I have to tonight take the time to go to each one, because there's a ton of them, and go to each one and look up the information, send it to PayPal, hopefully I can, I can win these and get them cleared up. And once you give that money, it's gone. You have to understand that. You gave the money, it's gone. There's no guarantee anything's going to happen. There's no contract. You can't sue that person for it. You gave that money, really, it's done. There's no, oh, he stole, he went. No, you gave it. You actively chose to give. Because I don't, certainly I don't think it's fair that we have a great positive day and people contribute because they like the streams and then I, half my income gets taken from me for nothing. I didn't do anything wrong, right? <clears throat> it's bullshit. You know, there's no more vest streak. And like I told you guys, without the motivation of the vest streak, it's very unlikely we're going to be hitting the tip skull every day. Um, I would love it if we did. It would certainly be super supportive if we did, because like I said, with all the things coming up, the new consoles and all the new games that I'm going to need to buy in the hardcore gaming season, plus the cost of the new consoles, plus I'd like to do a green screen, then we can look to the future for things like upgrading my chair, which I'm probably going to need to do because this chair is not great, um, and maybe a new webcam, you know, and then the possibility of, you know, next year, maybe looking at things like a new PC and stuff. These are all things that are possibilities, you know, depending on how much I make. And if the vest streak had kept going, these were all concrete. Like, it was definitely going to happen. But now that the vest streak is over, it's uncertain, you know, what level of support I'm going to get. Uh, we have to see. We have to play it by ear and see what happens. Okay? I need th that money. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills. Uh, the only other story I want to talk about, since my haters made such a fucking giant hoopla about it, because they're dumb fuck shitheads, and lied about it, literally with, the with defamatory videos on YouTube that are illegal and should have been taken down, um, I figured I'd do a follow-up. Talking about this stupid movie Cuties on Netflix, because now the movie apparently released, and now that people have actually seen it, uh, it's fucking disgusting. Apparently, for them to understand, I don't, I'm not gonna see it, I don't have Netflix, and I have no intention of seeing this fucking movie regardless. I'm good at lying. <laughs> this is supposed to be a movie, alright, that's supposed to be a coming-of-age movie about a bunch of 11-year-old girls in France who join a dance troupe, or form a dance troupe, and they are basically kind of lured into doing sexualized dancing because that's what's popular now and they want to win a dance competition. Now one of the girls is actually a Muslim and her Muslim family is basically super duper against this and saying no that's you know it's sexualization of minors you should not be doing this it's against our religion it's against who you are as a person this is disgusting and so what the movie's supposed to be is a movie that condemns the sexualization of minors all right but apparently now that the movie is out what people are saying is like even though the message of the movie is that this is bad the movie literally shoves this disgusting sexualization of minors down your throat a million ways. Like, there's a ton of da sexualized dances with these underage girls. 
There's a scene where one of the girls has her pants pulled down. You see their ass. There's a scene, apparently, where one of the girls, like, flashes her f chest. Yes! Yes! It's like, what the fuck is that? You know, here, and here's the thing. I made this comparison. I said, think about the movie Schindler's List. The movie Schindler's List is made to condemn the Holocaust, but it has gruesome scenes in it where it shows the Jews being killed, right? And the reason it does that is because they don't want you to forget history. They want you to understand this really happened. Now, during those scenes of the Jews being killed, is it glamorized? Is it like, you know what I mean? Like, is it overdone to the point where it's overblown and it's just a constant killing of Jews the whole movie? Of course not. The movie is about showing that the Jews were humans just like everybody else. They didn't deserve to be mass murdered by the Nazis. And it showed that some of the people in Germany were quite good, like Schindler, trying to save the Jews. Okay? That was the point of the movie. Alright? So now, this movie Cutie... Okay, we Cuties condemns the sexualization of minors. Let's show the sexualization of minors 400 times during the movie, including these incredibly risque scenes that are disgusting because these girls are underage. You know? I'm just like... What the fuck? Like, now that we know what the movie actually is, because people have seen it, and they're writing all this information about it, I'm fucking disgusted too. I had to lie about things because I had to protect my family. Right? Like, you can condemn something without glamorizing it, you know, and sensationalizing it. And it seems like this movie wants it both ways. This movie wants to say, oh, this is bad, but by the way, here's an hour and a half of what we're saying is bad. You know, why Why even, if that's the case, if it's so bad, why give it so much attention? Why give it so much airtime? Why have these ridiculous sexual things going on with underage girls, right? So, to the idiots who said, Phil, I feel defended this movie. First of all, I did not defend the movie. What I did is based on facts. The facts were this game, this game, this, this movie won awards at the Sundance Film Festival for like best direct, direction and stuff like that. And people were, in the, in the movie community, people were saying this movie was good. And it was not any of this stuff that it actually is. They were basically saying this movie is a condemnation of the sexualization of minors. Okay. And that's what I said. That's what it's supposed to be. Okay. Then that's what it is. I never said a movie that would have the sexualization of minors is good or should be defended at all. I said, from the information we were all given, if you actually read into it on the internet, um, this is what it was supposed to be. But apparently now the movie's out, it's not. Apparently now it's like, no. The reason that this movie was promoted the way it was on Netflix is because it actually is about the sexualization of minors and in a sensationalized way for shock factor value. Okay, so... I love it. I love it. I'm sorry, but for me, that's, that's disgusting. And now that we actually know what it is... And the thing is, no one knew what this movie was until today. Because today the movie came out and people actually watched it and now they can actually write all this stuff about it and say this is what it really is. Up until this point, everything that was said about the movie was complete and utter speculation. So the fact that there were people trying to call me out saying I was defending the movie are fucking brainless idiots because no one had seen the fucking movie yet. There's no way you could even say that until the movie had come out. And now that it's out, there's no way I'm going to defend this movie that sensationalizes pedophilia. That's disgusting. So, fuck that movie. It's funny, people are like, cancel Netflix, cancel Netflix. I don't even have Netflix. <laughs> I can't cancel something I don't have, and I had no, no intention of ever watching this movie to begin with. Um, you know? And now, certainly, I definitely want nothing to do with it at all. Uh, that is gross. The, you know? And the thing that gets me is that the director is apparently a female, a, a black woman from France, and she's like, oh, this is based on my own experience. So in your own experience, when you were 11 years old, you were doing sexual dancing, and your parents didn't, like, beat the shit out of you and tell you it was wrong? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe you should keep those kind of stories to yourself. Maybe we don't need to know about your fucked up childhood. Because <laughs> I certainly don't want to know about that. <laughs> what on earth? <clears throat> anyway. Um, so that's that. And that's the end of that. And that's the last time I mentioned in that atrocity of a fucking piece of shit. Holy crap. All right. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, it was good. Oh, it was delicious. Oh, that was so good, man. So, Only Iced Coffee did a 100-bit cheer. And says the following. You think it's a, I think it's disingenuous that Ninja has a donation and tips button on his Twitch page, even though he already makes a shit ton of money from ad revenue, subs, sponsorships, and other deals, in addition to his multi-year and multi-million dollar exclusive deal that he just signed with Twitch TV. It's disgusting. I'm not going to say it's disgusting. I'm definitely going to say it's exploitative of his viewers. Because, yeah, the bottom line is Ninja doesn't need that money at all. He's got a million millions of dollar contract to sit on a stream and play video games with people every day. Okay? 
to give you some perspective, guys, all right? When I first started on YouTube, all right, I did have the ability to donate because I wasn't making any money doing it, okay? Once I started making money in 2011, 2012, 2013, those years, I did not accept any kind of, like, tips, donations, none of that. I told everyone, if you want to contribute, contact me. If you want to donate a game or whatever for me to play on a stream, or excuse me, on a, in a video, because back then I wasn't streaming. Um, but I didn't accept any, any kind of monetary donations once I started making big money on YouTube. I felt that would be incredibly dis dishonest, and I, I knew it wasn't going to make sense. Now, in 2015, I moved out here to Washington State in 2014, and in 2015, number one, I got into massive debt from the move, and uh, uh, you know, and many other things behind the scenes that we're not going to you know, go into massive detail about here. And in 2015 was also the year where I saw a massive amount of negativity, a big decline in my income, and false copyright strikes that destroyed my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, which was my major, major source of income. So that year, I opened a Patreon, and I started accepting, you know, contributions. It wasn't until 2017, when I became a full-time streamer, and I basically abandoned YouTube as a business model, all right, that I started actually accepting tips on a daily basis. I opened up an actual PayPal just for it, and now... I changed myself. I evolved. I became a full-time beggar. For me, my major source of income is crowdfunding. It's you guys contributing during the streams, right? That's my major source of income. I have no behind-the-scenes contract with anyone. No partnerships with anyone. No TV deals. No te no shows. No cl exclusivity agreements where I'm getting paid millions of dollars. Nothing. Is it disingenuous for Ninja to be asking for tips and donations on a live stream that he's already getting paid millions of dollars to stream? Yes. It's just, just objective fact. Yes. Absolutely. To ask your viewers for more when you're already a millionaire is insanely greedy. That's my opinion. You can disagree, and that's okay if you disagree. But if right, I can tell you guys right now, all right? If I signed a contract for someone with, to, to stream anyway, if I signed a contract to stream on Twitch, if I signed a contract to stream on YouTube, and I was getting paid millions of dollars to do this, I would, that moment, shut down my PayPal and shut off contributions and donations and say, all you guys need to do is watch, if you feel like cheering or subbing, great. You know, by all means, support the channel if you want. But, you know, I, I'm not looking for nothing. I'm already a millionaire. You know, that would be enough for me. The moment it happened, I would shut it down. Fuck you, you fucking greedy piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. That's me, though. That's me. That's my personal uh, feelings on more, the morality of the situation, how I would handle it. Uh, other people are different. For some people, it's never enough, right? So, you know, not only get the millions of dollars contra exclusivity contract, uh, but also milk your viewers, you know, everything. And that's how it works. I don't even know what else to say. Because it's, it's not it's not just him, it's everyone. Everyone who's who's these ginormous guys who have these, these giant agreements making millions of dollars. And then on top of that, Let's get crowdfunding too. You don't need the crowdfunding. You know who needs the crowdfunding? The people who can't get those giant million dollar agreements for playing a single fucking game on stream. You know, but you know, who cares about them? <laughs> you're you're the lucky motherfucker. Just keep keep taking, right? But that's how I always I've always been in, in my life. You know, when I like I said when I was making so much money on YouTube. Those two, three years, like 2011 through 2013, and even through 2014, I did not accept monetary contributions whatsoever, at all. It wasn't until 20, it wasn't until 2015 I opened the Patreon, and 2017 I started taking tips when I actually needed the help. All right, that, but that's me. And you guys, listen, if you guys want to go watch Ninja and support that kind of behavior and that kind of content, you can, and that's your choice. In life, you have to pick and choose what you support, what kind of people, the you know how they are, you know that that mentality. If you like that, fine. Maybe maybe you think he's a go getter, right? He's a go getter. He gets out there, he puts out streams that are good, and he deserves every any penny he gets from anybody, right? I don't know. You go ahead and support that. I don't care. That's one hundred percent a lie.
But, you know, certainly for me, that's not what I would do, and that's not the attitude I would have. The, mo the minute that, that I'm getting exclusivity contracts and I'm a millionaire, I don't ask, for, I would never ask a single thing from any of you. Nope. That would be the end of it for me. I would shut all that down, and uh, I would just write it out. You can't just believe everything you're told on the internet? If you want to help with me affording the new consoles, tip me on the streams. That simple. You know? And to just, just keep it going. Keep the support going the way that it's been going for the last six months. And I should be able to afford both consoles if that were the case. If it continues the way that it was going the last six months, I should be able to afford both the new consoles and cover them for you guys at launch. Okay? Alright, so uh, Diaper Gaming 23 tipped me $53 and says, Good morning. Good morning, Diaper Gaming. I appreciate the tip. Again, it's, it, the only reason I, I, I sound skeptical is because I am. Because we've gotten two tips so far today. One from Bacon Place, who's not even here, and said yesterday it wasn't then tipping. And now someone whose name is Diaper Gaming. Do you understand why I'm a little skeptical here today, guys? And in reality, that actually qualifies us for the Gunner Glasses right away. So, that's cool. At the same time, I mean, <laughs> you gotta kind of be skeptical about that name and what it means. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I hate to say it is hard to trust people on the internet, Tony Hawk. Yeah, I finally dusted them off, my three jerseys that I have from back in the day, and I decided to wear one on stream today. So, no, we're not doing the jerseys as, like, a goal on stream. I think that would be pretty stupid because if I'm already wearing a t-shirt or whatever, or a vest, like, if, I'm, if we hit the tips goal and I put on a vest, how then am I also going to put on a jersey, right? So, I'll be wearing these jerseys from time to time now, alternate these in with my other shirts and stuff that I wear on the streams, okay? It's absolutely pathetic, but that's how people are on the internet. They live in this isolated world of the online where they don't ever have to grow up. They're never held responsible for their actions. Therefore, they never have to mature. They can literally be babies their entire lives. And I've become a meme on the internet that it's, fu it's fun to make fun of Phil. They call me the man-child. Phil has indoctrinated children who send him money. Blatantly milking for money. It's a money pit. It's gone. Just gone like that. In an instant. Fucking gone. I just care about money. That I just can't help it. I even. Contributions are mandatory, but I need your help. I am appealing directly to you. No decency, no respect, no common sense, no fucking maturity. It's the guy who just doesn't get reality.